<laughs> well, we got a few boulders today. A few. It's kind of a unique project because usually we start in the back showing them what we're going to do. And yeah. here we're just unloading first because we have to go get soil and we want to try to get all of our supplies before we start going. Hey, you know what I was thinking as I was driving here? Tell me. You know how a lot of people wear like flare on their stuff? Like, you know, they're, I did a hair flare day. See it? Yeah. <laughs> it's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> the likeness? The likeness, you know? Well, watch it, because the other one's mating better. Ah! <laughs> you can tell it's gonna be a fun day. It's just the two of us today. Chris Hansen and I are running solo. We're gonna build a cool little pondless waterfall. It's a four block pondless waterfall. I think actually, the way we should film this is really just to show everybody how easy this is. I mean, just the two of us, yep. right? We don't have any of the brains here, any of the brawn. Come on, I wow. know you. Yeah. <laughs> Manpower, Alfred, yeah. So the two of us are gonna try to figure this out and if we can do it, so can you. So let's kind of go over the design really quick right. and show them what we're gonna do. There you have it, folks. <laughs> you see what I mean? <laughs> So there used to actually be a little small pond here. I think that's actually the remains of it, just a preformed tub. And it looked good for what it was. I mean, for a preformed tub, it was about as good as a preformed tub could look. It had a little waterfall. It was one of those prefab things. Sat here, but we saw this slope that we could work with. And so we're gonna start a little waterfall kind of up in this direction here, right where that hosta's sitting, right there. There's a sea of hostas in here. We gotta pull all of those up, but that waterfall is gonna face exactly the same way Chris is facing because the house is back over there. So if they can get a small little view of a waterfall from here, that much better. Of course, if we face it this way, people will see it as they come down the pathways. They'll see it from this seating area. They'll see it from that seating area and it'll look so much better. And then we take advantage of the slope and there's probably a 12 inch slope from where Chris is standing down to here, maybe even a little bit more, 15 inches. The smart people aren't here, so I don't know, right? There's 26, you know, but. Okay. <laughs> and it's gonna come and take a hard turn coming down the hillside and then finish into a four block pondless here. The biggest challenge we'll have with a small system like that, a four block pondless is like, where do we put the vault? How do we get the rock in there? And so we'll do the four blocks, but I'll probably excavate out considerably larger to have real estate for the room for the rocks. And you'll see what I'm talking about in a second here. But the big reason why you got the 15 by 20 liner too, right? Yep. So, so we did an oversized liner just so I have plenty of room to get all the way up into here. And then 15 feet wide is obviously wider than what I need here, but I want that to expand all the way to here. And I think the drop coming into this pondless might sit all the way back into that space there. So list of components on this project, guys. Brian specced out a 15 by 20 liner, like we said, equal size fabric. We have a 12 inch spillway today instead of the 22 inch one that you guys have normally seen on our videos. We have a two to 5,000 variable speed solids handling pump, 25 feet of pipe, a pump vault, four aqua blocks, and an install kit, of course, with a can of foam and that kind of stuff, and a handful of lights to tie into their existing landscape lighting. So really not a whole lot of product for this and what two and a half tons of stone like you brought 15 rocks right yep. like so we have plenty of rock and then we have all the little rocks we could ever need so he's just used these to go around the property and if we need to borrow a couple of these we can borrow some of those and what a beautiful setting oh my gosh well it's it's yeah you got beautiful it. you got it. <laughs> so what do you think first things first get these yep there's the hair flare hair flare <laughs> hmm <laughs> All right, you ready for business? Yeah, let's get these removed. All right, so well on my way. Chris went to go get some soil. We're gonna need that extra soil. We're probably gonna need two to three yards of soil. The main reason we need that stuff is because the soil I'm gonna generate from this hole will never ever be enough to create the berm I want to give us a realistic looking waterfall face in that house. So when we do a small system like this, we almost always bring in some extra soil. But you can see all the hostas have been removed. So now I got a nice clean pallet to work with over in here. I've located my four aqua blocks. Notice how I don't have the four aqua blocks right up against the patio here. It's kind of hard with all the weird sun, filtered sun coming through this wooded backyard. But let's see, yeah, it is what it is. There's four aqua blocks right here. I want my pump vault to sit there. And the main reason I want it to sit there is the pump vault's gonna sit a little bit higher than the top of the aqua blocks. And because the soil's already higher in that area, it makes it a little easier to hide on the back space. I also want a little bit more real estate bringing that waterfall in over on this side. And so if I moved everything over, 
lever. My pump has to sit right next to the aqua box. In fact, it's gonna take up the space of that aqua block. If my pump sat here, by the time I started putting my waterfall together, everything would be in the way. So this gives me all kinds of room to do creative stuff on this side. And I think that'll make a little bit more sense once we start digging. But for now, I'm just gonna lay these out, dig these guys down. We're gonna get them down about six inches, maybe five inches lower than the top of this patio here. All that soil will go up over there and then we'll locate the pump vault. Oh, you can also see some of you with a keen eye have probably noticed this in the background. Not a huge deal, but definitely an obstacle. Drainage off the downspout from over there. So it's not collecting a ton of water. It could actually be the sump pump. He's got all of these lines coming into a corrugated pipe. More than likely, this downspout and this sump pump line probably tie together and come out this way. I have two options. I can get an extension with this and run it out and under and just let it discharge out underneath the stream kind of close to where the bag of gravel is over there. I could look to see if my elevations are right and could I actually take this water, dump it into the stream system so when it rains, Mother Nature tops this off. A four block system would get filled up pretty darn fast, which isn't a big deal. I would just have to make sure I create a distinctive overflow off that way. So I think I'll leave that up to the customer and see what he wants to do. I think I would personally take use of that rainwater and fill it up for me as long as we had an overflow that wouldn't erode away patios and everything else. But that's on us. So we'll see what he wants to do. Dig. Wait, Chris, wait. Brian. That's what four minutes gets you, right there. Maybe four and a half, four and a half minutes, big time. <laughs> what were you gonna say? That's an odd location for the pump vault. <laughs> Anyways, like I said, that's a very unique location for that pump vault, considering the waterfall's coming right to the side. Hold this. Yes, I would love it. So my thought process was this. We could have put the pump here and bringing it right next to the patio would have made it obviously super convenient to get to the pump. The thing is with a pondless, you don't need to get to the pump. Like why do you need to service this really but once a year to turn it off? And so having it in a location where you can easily get to it didn't make a whole lot of sense. Okay. The other thing I was worried about was how are we gonna disguise it in a way that looked really good up in front? I think you had a good idea where you could put this here, we could put the fake stone over the top of it and then maybe ramp gravel up to it. But I almost wanna see maybe more of a little bit more pooling water back into here. So a bib liner over the top of this and then still do that kind of landslide with maybe a couple of the, I think they've got some hostas on the property somewhere we can use. <laughs> There's not a right and a wrong place to put it. For me, it was put it over here for a couple of reasons. The plumbing, super easy. Yep. Right, the waterfalls is just gonna be right up in there. It gave a whole lot more real estate to do stuff in here. The only part that doesn't make sense is it's so close to the waterfall. But we're obviously gonna have, like with this little drop that comes here, frame rock, frame rock. But off of every frame rock, there's usually those wing walls. Mm -hmm. So we've got to really think about that. When we set this rock here, how does this rock then come in next to it to help hide this? Yeah. And then how does that work going like this? Our aqua box are only this high. Right, it's so, basically the height of that shelf, right? The shelf. Right, yeah. So the rock will kind of come like this, and that's the shape I was looking for. Yeah. As those come like this, then it opens it up and lends itself to the dry stream bed that we're gonna do over here. On this side, the rocks will come like this, and then come into here, and then we'll just have some random stuff in here with some plants and little. So you could have put it here, you could have put it there, you could have put it over here. Even here would have like worked maybe with the overflow and everything else. Sure. But I liked the idea of the plumbing yeah. going up over there, being easy. We'll have to shave this down a little bit, but no big deal. And we'll see if it works. That's all I got. That's all I got. <laughs> <laughs> well, and for a lot of you guys that are building Pondus waterfalls out there, and even myself included very much so, my default is to put almost the pump in one of these back corners. So I'm really excited to learn from you know Brian's kind of vision and see how he's going to pull that off because this is going to be able to teach me something or a technique that I can use in the future and also that you guys can use in the future. So really excited about doing it this way. Like Brian said, there's not really a right or wrong reason. You want to take into account the aesthetics or the ease of getting to the pump if you ever have to, but more how are you going to hide it? I think the thing is think about what you're doing with your rocks. Don't just randomly put it here without some kind of thought and where are the boulders going to go and how is that water going to move through this area. A four block system is actually a pretty challenging system mm -hmm. as far as aesthetically making it look like it belongs, yeah. right? It's a very tiny hole. I think the other thing we want to pay attention to why we don't have the fabric of the liner in right now 
off is pay attention to how we've excavated things out. We could have gone ahead and just dug this out, backfilled everything, folded the liner back, and then tried to dig this out, but it's really a pain in the butt trying to dig up against the liner. So we went ahead and measured this, so let's go ahead, dig this out now. Why, it's easy. We don't worry about shovels hitting the liner or anything else, and we'll just go ahead and dig out. So we've gone ahead and dug the whole stream out, basically, stream and waterfall area, before we put the liner and everything in here, just making it that much easier to throw dirt around and everything else without things getting really dirty and sloppy. I think later we'll show them what we're gonna do with drain tile mm -hmm. and how we're gonna accept that into the stream. But for now, let's just get the fabric and the liner in here, this thing backfilled, and then we can start kind of piecing all this together. Right on. Good. Yep. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. <laughs> She's a beaut, Clark. Yep. What do you think? Progress? We're getting there. We are getting there. How many times a day do you think the two of us say we're getting there? Do <laughs> you think it's just a self-motivating thing we say to each other? Like, all right, looking good. If we say we're there, then it's kind of like, ah. Or if you were to reverse and be like, man, we got a ways to go. Uh, it's kind of like changes the attitude. So yeah, man, we're getting there. <laughs> we are getting there. <laughs> Fault is in, aqua blocks are in, everything's excavated, the liner's in. We, you know, obviously take this back. We backfill up to the aqua blocks. Now the two of us have to divide and conquer. I think we're going to do rock, paper, scissors. What did you call it? You have some French. It's Yeah, it is. It's French. Rochambeau. Rochambeau. On who's going to do vault, plumbing, pump, all that kind of stuff, edge work, and who's going to work on the waterfall. Normally, I love doing the waterfalls, but I'm actually, I really want to do the edge work down in the basin because I think I can make it look. Really okay, well then, just for consumer engagement, let's do Rochambeau. Okay, ready? Ready. And you pick scissors every time. Ready? Ready? One, One two, two, three. That's paper. You're going to lose. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to win. <laughs> ready? Do you understand the rules of it? <laughs> it's one, guys, two, three, shoot. You guys, not one, two, three. I mean, I know you all want to see this, but you can't. And yeah, that hurts right there. See that? That hurts. What you got? A little yeah. nick, a little nicker. Ooh, what, what did you say? It's a little nicker. <laughs> nicker. One, one two, two, three. three. Oh, yeah, it's I one, win. Two, three, okay. Shoot. Okay, best of three. Here we go. Let's you see what happens. Run through the rules. Ready? One, one two, two, three. Okay. Shoot. You won. I did win. So what do you want to do? What do you want to do? You run with the waterfalls. Oh, baby. great. All right, I'm going to tackle this area. Usually when we do this, I'll start dropping rocks in here. I get so far and then Chris can start working off those rocks, doing the plumbing and everything else. But I really need to get these kind of set into this area first. He'll kind of come in this area and then he just follows me as I move up into there. So with the beauty of GoPro and time lapse, they'll get to see exactly what the heck we're talking about. Right. Almost there. <laughs> so like they say, pond building, it's getting there. <laughs> It's actually coming along quite well. And of course, Chris and I can't help ourselves but overbuild it and we're a little short on liner, but we're making it work. I'm gonna turn this around, show you some things that had to be adapted and then what our goal is to finish up here. So here we go. Waterfalls is coming off of that rock there. This one here. This waterfalls is actually gonna be super cool. I'll get in there in a second. The customer gave us a new vault lid, which is kind of cool. What do you think, should we mass produce these things? Yes? No? Okay. <laughs> Um, he bought it, wanted us to incorporate it someplace in the pond. It actually fits perfect over the top of our pump vault and it's quite light. So if he needs to get in there, he can still get in there. We're gonna get a cool little waterfall from this area here. As we come up this way, we get another waterfall. And for such a simple waterfall, it's gonna be pretty cool. The shape of this rock has a high point right here. And so water's gonna split, come this way, roll down this, come into here and then drop through that shadow. And then over here, it's pretty flat right through here. Let me drop this way. I've got hostas growing right in my pond. And so with all of his, we tried to create a little pocket for a hosta in the water. We're gonna really limit how much water gets back in here by the time I put a cobble back in here and foam around it. And we'll get some moss and stuff in through here. And then we get another nice drop off of that rock, kind of coming in this way. We'll get a light from back here, shining up into there, which will look great. And then we're at our spillway. So next step is to hook up that spillway, which feeds the entire thing. We're gonna create more of an upper pool 
up and through here. Kind of a bird bath loving pool with all the trees and everything. It's gonna be a bird sanctuary. So just to make sure we can accept those birds in here. We'll do some gravelly type edges. And we've got just enough rock sitting over there. A couple over, let's see if I can do this one finger over there. Oh, that's skill. Coming along. <laughs> <laughs> We're almost there. Looking good. You know what I'm trying to say. <laughs> All right, we'll keep at it and should have this thing running and I'm guessing probably two to three hours. Hold on tight. <laughs> 